So, word just broke. Um, a story just broke, I guess I would say. Jalen Brown and his stance and his situation with the current Boston Celtics organization. And a lot of people are saying, well, basically, Jalen wants to be the number one option and this and that. And can he be? And ultimately, for me, I believe it comes down to what's the money talk? Are you going to pay him the super max or the max or whatever contract that he sees himself worthy in getting paid? And for me as a Rockets fan, I'm excited because even though I know he's not a free agent until the offseason of the 2024 uh, year, I know that the Rockets have a hole at wing and we don't know how this draft is going to go this year. And we don't know how that draft pick is going to turn out. I like what I'm seeing from Tari Eason, but I don't think Tari Eason is ever going to be the, the type of score or the type of player that Jalen Brown can be. And before I get started on my tangent about him becoming a potential Houston Rocket, I want to say that this notion that Jalen Brown can't carry, Jalen Brown can't be a number one option. He's similar to uh, Clay Thompson. Those guys have number one scoring ability. If you can go off for 40 to 50 points and you've done it multiple times in your career, it's not a one-off, you can be a number one option. Now, there are levels to number one options. There are levels. But if you go to the right situation, you, in fact, can be a number one option. Don't tell me that if you were to just take Jalen Brown off of the Celtics and put him on the Indiana Pacers, that they wouldn't be a top four to five seed in the East. Don't tell me that. Don't tell me that they wouldn't be able to compete. That team has great guard play. That team has a nice bench. That team has good coaching. The one thing that that team is missing is a perimeter, isolation, scoring, shot creation wing. That is the one thing that that team is missing. They have a big man. They have guys that can defend. They have guys that can, you know, shoot off the catch. They have a playmaker. They don't have a Jalen Brown. You're telling me if that team got Jalen Brown, they couldn't potentially go to the second round or conference finals, depending on the matchup or the injury, because guys get hurt every single year. We saw Trey Young do this with Trey Young being the only offensive option on his team that was a reliable 30 to 40 point score on a nightly basis. We saw Trey Young do this in 2021, but we want to act like Jalen Brown, who's six, seven, can't do the same thing. This is what I don't like. If you surround guys with the right talent, they can do it. They can absolutely be a number one option. There are levels to number one options. I want to say that again. There are levels to number one options. Some number one options are better than other number one options. But Jalen Brown absolutely could be a number one option. That is what I want to take it out the way. Secondly, I think this works for the Houston Rockets. I think that if the Rockets miss on a free agent this year, and they or they just don't believe in paying somebody top dollar who they don't necessarily believe in. 2024 offseason when Jalen Brown is a unrestricted free agent, assuming that he doesn't get extended, assuming that he doesn't get traded to a situation and then extends in there. 2024 offseason is looking really, really good for the Houston Rockets, because by that time, Jalen Green will be going into year four, I believe, or year three, year four, I think. And Jabari will be going into year three. Whoever they draft this year will be going into year two. Like, that is the type of stuff that you want, and it builds character. And by that time, Jalen is going to get better. Jabari is going to get better. The guy from 2023 going into 2024 that they draft is going to be better. And you can still pluck and sign free agents here and there to try and build around your team. But your top four to five players, Jabari Smith, Jalen Brown, Jalen Green, whoever they draft this year. And if Kevin Porter is still on the team, that's a fifth guy. I love Tari Eason. I love Alperen Sengun. I love Kenya Martin Jr. I just named eight guys. If we add Jalen Brown, that could help turn the, the, the luck and, and, and just the fortune of this franchise. So for people to turn their nose up at Jalen Brown and to act like he's not, we're not bringing him here to be Luka Doncic. We're not bringing him here to be James Harden. We're not saying we're going to give you an average guard, an average wing, an average uh, center, guys that can't do more than one thing great, guys that can either shoot or play defense. 
roll to the rim or play defense. They can't create their own shot off the dribble. They're not a perimeter threat. They can't create for anybody else. They just stagnant guys that just sit there and, and look lost if they have the ball in their hands. You're not going to have that with Jalen Brown if you bring him here. Jalen Green knows to do with, knows what to do with the ball in his hands. So would Jabari Smith. So does Opera Sengun. So does Kevin Porter Jr. So does Tari Eason. So when you bring Jalen Brown here, that just makes your half-court offense that more potent. That just gives you a situation to where now you got two to three guys that can get their own shot. What I look at this situation, this potential situation as, is to a much lesser degree what the Phoenix Suns have in Kevin Durant and Devin Booker. Devin Booker is obviously the younger player. Kevin Durant is obviously the older player. If he was to come here, Jalen Brown, he would be the older player. Jalen Green would be the younger player. Now, obviously, Jalen Brown won't be as old as Kevin Durant, and Jalen Green won't be old as Devin Booker, but you get what I'm saying. In terms of pecking order, in terms of having two guys that can create their own shot, two guys that can shoot off the catch, two guys that are both athletic, two guys that both have the ability to defend, this is what you want. This is the type of of team that you continue to build and continue to get better for a guy like Jalen Brown to just come in and you plug him in and play like a 2019 Toronto Raptors Kawhi Leonard. They plugged Kawhi and Danny Green and Marcus Saul into a team that the year prior had won 56 games or something like that. So now you add three quality other players and boom, you take off, you go and you win a championship. Now I'm not saying it's going to work just like that, but it potentially can if the Rockets make the right decisions and if the Rockets make the right moves and continue to build this thing and push this thing forward because you never know how things will go. All it takes is one bad offseason, one bad month for things to sway. All it takes is for the Celtics to short Jalen Brown one single dollar for things to sway. That's all I wanted to say. I'm very excited at this opportunity. I had to talk about it, even though we're only in the year 2023 and we're a whole full offseason away from, or two offseasons basically, away from this happening or this even potentially happening. That's all I wanted to say. As always, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Red Nation Blogger, out.